Hi, this is Steve with OS Nexus, and in this video, we're going to deploy a brand new object storage cluster in less than 10 minutes. And we're going to do that with Quantastore, our software defined storage platform, combined with composable storage from Western Digital. Specifically, we'll be using the OpenFlex Data24. Composable storage combined with software defined storage is a really cool combination of technologies. But what it's really about is standardization, it's about interchangeable parts. It goes all the way back to Henry Ford and Eli Whitney. And what you see here that's really revolutionary is that these boxes here on the right that are being used for the storage cluster and these boxes here on the left that are being used for the compute servers are the same. You don't need specialized servers for your storage systems. You can use all the same kinds of servers for both use cases. And that's a really big deal. It makes it so that cloud service providers, managed service providers, and large organizations can start to buy one size of server that fits all. And the reason why they can do that is because of these purple boxes on the far right. It takes all of the NVMe, it takes all of the storage media out of the servers so that they can deliver it wherever they want, whenever they want. And the way that that works is that the storage media is delivered over NVMe over fabrics using the RDMA protocol to make it super fast delivery to any group of servers on our network. And then we form a storage cluster here that then delivers a variety of different protocols. And that's what we're gonna do the demo on today. So let me take you through a walkthrough of what I'm gonna demo here in just a minute. We're gonna go through this group of six steps here, uh, which starts off by assigning all the storage media from our OpenFlex boxes to our storage cluster. So we have 48 NVMe devices from our two OpenFlex Data24 storage boxes, and we're gonna go and deliver those to six Quantastore systems. That assignment of storage is done in Quantastore through what's called an NVMe software adapter, and we're gonna do that in actually a single step. That's one of the funnest steps because it shows off a lot of the composable storage automation features of Quantastore. Once we have that media assigned, we can then go ahead and create the cluster. With Quantastore, you form a grid out of all of the systems that you want to manage as a single unit. And within the grid, you can create one or more clusters, scale out clusters or scale up clusters. In this case, we're gonna use all the nodes to make a single scale out cluster, and we use Ceph technology for that. When we create the Ceph cluster, it's automatically going to deploy these monitors. Those are showed as MONs. After that, we're gonna take all those NVMe devices that we had added to the systems on the previous step, and we're gonna turn those into what are called OSDs, or object storage daemons. The OSDs are basically your data devices. They store all of the data for the cluster, irrespective of what type of pool that you've created or types of pools. So you could create multiple pools so that you could deliver file block and object storage all from the same cluster. Today, we're gonna to create a single pool for object storage. We're gonna set that up with erasure coding for the data protection. It's gonna use 4K plus 2M. What that allows us to have is any two servers can be turned off in this cluster at any time with no interruption to the clusters. After we've set up the object storage zone, you have to provide a service on each one of the servers that talks the S3 protocol through what's called the Ceph Rados gateway. The more systems that you have running them, the more throughput that you'll get. We see a very linear, linear climb in performance as we deploy more and more S3 gateways or Rados gateways. After that, we can start adding users and buckets to the cluster. So let's get started with the demo. So I'm logging into a Quantastore grid made up of six servers. Uh, these are the Dell R740s. Uh, you can see that we've got, uh, as I mentioned, six of them. They're running the latest version of Quantastore 5.9, which has all the new composable storage technology in it. And that's where we're going to start. I've already added the two OpenFlex Data 24s that we have. These have 24 15 terabyte drives in them. Because we have 24 drives in two units, that's 48 drives total. It means that across the six Quantastore servers, we're gonna be able to assign eight of those devices to each server. Just real briefly, to add more OpenFlex systems to your Quantastore grid, you just click on Add Credentials and then click on uh, the button there to go and add more and more systems here. You put in the primary and secondary IP address, the management port on the OpenFlex box, and it will log in and then take over managing the box for you. And one of the first things I want to show you is how easy it is to go and assign storage from an OpenFlex Data24 
into the Quanta Store cluster through these new composable storage management features. And that really all comes together in this one dialog, configure media connectivity. And I'm going to sort the available devices that are on this first OpenFlex by their port group. And then we're going to essentially grab all of the devices from a particular port group and assign it to the first Quanta Store box. So QS1 is going to get devices uh, 1 through 8 uh, from the first port group AIC-A. Each port group has 200 gigabit of throughput. There's a pair of 100 gig ports on each port group. And so it makes it a nice easy way to divide up the capacity for this uh, particular configuration. Uh, after we've selected the devices we want to be assigned to the Guana Store box, we just click OK. And it's going to go and start a task to go and do all that configuration work for us. And what we're going to see appear here are what we call NVMe software adapters. And so there's the first one and there's the second one. Uh, Quanta Store through the composable storage management system that's built into it knows how to figure out you know, which ports are being used by the OpenFlex for that particular group of devices that we've assigned in. And it's uh, logged in and automatically connected to all the devices. So through these NVMe adapters that we created through Configure Media Connectivity, we now have all eight of those devices attached so now we just need to repeat that process for the rest of the nodes. So here we're going to click on configure media connectivity for the second box. I'm going to use that same technique to uh, sort by um, the external port group. And we're going to grab everything from uh, the AICB port group. And uh, this is from the first OpenFlex box and we're signing that to QS2. We're just going to click OK and get that started. And we're just going to repeat this for the, re the remaining boxes. and all of that configuration is done. So we've got our, um, through the process of using that configure media connectivity, what it's really doing is just creating these NVMe adapters and saving us a bunch of time. We don't have to put in IP addresses or figure out which ports we need to log into on the OpenFlex boxes. We just tell it which media devices we want to map to which nodes. And here you can see we used AICA for the first box, B for the second, C for the third, and then we repeated that for the second OpenFlex box for, this, for the nodes QS4, QS5, and QS6. So now that the composable storage has been assigned into the Quantastore cluster, what you're going to see on each of the Quantastore systems is 32 physical devices. And that's because the eight devices that we assigned from the OpenFlex, we divided each one of those up into four namespaces. And you can see that here. NVMe 0 has namespace 1 through 4, as do all the other eight devices. They've been divided up into four pieces. So we have a total of 192 devices in our cluster. We did that to give better performance for the cluster because it's a small cluster. So now let's create our Ceph cluster in our Quantastore grid. We're going to do that by going to the Scale Out Cluster Configuration tab and clicking on the Create Cluster button. We're going to put all the systems into the cluster, and we're using this 10.1.0 network for both our east-west and north-south traffic. This is going to be for the client communication and all the inter-node communication. The 192 network, that's our management network. That's one gig, so we don't want to be using that. And the 10.2 network, that's our storage fabric that we're using for communication with the OpenFlex boxes. So now that we have selected all the right ports here. Um, we can look at the advanced settings. If we wanted to enable compression and encryption, this is the time to go do that. You can just check those two boxes to turn that on and then just click OK to create the cluster. Because this is a six node cluster, Quantastore is going to automatically deploy five monitors. Once all the monitors are reporting back healthy like you see here, it'll take a minute or two for that. Uh, we can go on to the next step. So now we can add all the storage media to our cluster. 
we have a whole bunch of NVMe devices across the six servers that we've mapped in from the OpenFlex boxes, but we also have a few NVMe devices that are internal to the server that we don't want to be using. So we just want the OpenFlex devices that have a product ID here that starts with WUS4. So we're just going to search on that WUS4 and click search. And that's going to remove all the devices here that are not our OpenFlex devices. So now we can select all of that, add it, and we see 192, which is the exact number of namespaces. That all looks correct. We don't need any of, of uh, these metadata offload settings because all of that's going to be stored within the media device itself. This is not a hybrid configuration. This is all flash, so it's, it's actually much simpler. And then we just click OK, and it's going to start going and creating those OSDs for us across the whole cluster. This step is probably the step that takes the longest. You'll be waiting a couple of minutes while it does all this work. And so you'll see in the taskbar down at the bottom, Okay, now all the OSD creation is complete. That's going to take a few minutes, um, more or less, depending on how many OSDs you're adding to your cluster. Uh, what you want to wait for is for all the devices to transition to this normal exists up state. As soon as it's in that state, then we're ready to go to the next step, which is to start creating our storage pools. <clears throat> and the type of storage pool that we're going to create here is an S3 zone. So we're going to click on that button. We're going to just use the default name. And we're going to set this up with a Razor coding 4 plus 2, which it's auto-selected for us. Ceph clusters have this concept of a placement group. And the number of placement groups that you create will depend on how many different use cases that you have for the cluster. If you're going to be creating a lot of different pools, you're going to scale up or down the number of placement groups. So we've simplified that into what we call a scaling factor. Uh, we're just going to leave it at the default of 50. You can increase it and decrease the number of placement groups in the future. Let me clear the tasks so we can clear out all the, one, all the ones that we've completed, and then we'll just see the ones that are running. And here you can see it's in the process of creating all the pools that are going to make up that object storage zone. Okay, so our object storage zone is set up and all of the requisite pools that make up the zone have all been created. Uh, now that we've created the zone, and we can see here that this one's set up as four plus two erasure coding. Next, we can go and create the Rados gateways on all the different systems. There's a couple of different S3 web servers built that are built in. Uh, there's the Civet web and the Beast. You wanna use the Beast, that's the faster of the two. And then of course you can choose between HTTPS and HTTP. Generally, you always want to use HTTPS, but if for some reason you're having, you're trying to debug some sort of uh, encryption problem or do some sort of special performance test, then you might try HTTP. Um, this enable all flash optimizations uh, is a, a setting that essentially does TCP no delay. It's helpful for these all flash uh, NVMe over fabric configurations. So we're going to turn on uh, those, that option and create our first Rados gateway on QS1. And then we're going to go and repeat this process to set up those Rados gateways on all the different boxes. So all the Rados gateways are now created, so we can talk the S3 protocol on all of the systems via the storage URL, which is the IP address colon 7480. Uh, now that we've got all of our Rados gateways deployed, we're ready to start using the cluster to write data to it, creating users and creating buckets. Let's go to the users and groups tab and create some S3 users. I'm going to go and create an S3 user for Steve, put that in there. <clears throat> And uh, here we can specify the secret key or access key. Uh, if we want to use one that we had from before that we want to keep with a, a new user account, um, otherwise it'll generate a new secret key and access key uh, for you for that S3 uh, user. Uh, you can also set quotas on the user account. And uh, once you've gone and created the user account, you can also change the keys for the user account or add more key, key pairs to it. So I've gone and created this Steve user account. I can go and modify it uh, to go and add more keys. 
You can also go in here, add more keys or to see what the current uh, key identifier is. And now that we've got the user account created, let's go ahead and create a bucket. Um, so we're gonna go to this main storage management tab and we're gonna go create a bucket. So we've got our bucket created. Uh, and that's all there is to the demo. We've completely set up an object storage cluster. We created an S3 user and a bucket for that user account. To see the overall health of our cluster, we just go over to the main scale out storage configuration tab and click on the cluster. So the last thing I wanted to highlight is how Quantastore integrates with the OpenFlex system so that when you click on the cluster, you can see all the devices that are being used. And we can select an individual system and you can see that it's showing us a subset of those devices that are being used by QS1. That correlation just makes maintenance that much easier. Some of the other things that you can do with the OpenFlex boxes from within Quantastore is to change the IP addresses. We can just right click on it and say modify external system port and change the IP address and subnet mask and click OK and, and get it all uh, set to the proper network. So that covers software defined composable storage. If you have any questions, write us at info at osnexus.com and thanks for watching.